Welcome back guys to another vlog. Coach under quarantine 2.0. <laughs> Still under quarantine, yeah. We are. You might hear some noise in the background from the kids outside playing. Don't worry about them. In their own gardens, may I add. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Social, social distancing is an actual thing in Britain, something we never thought that we would see, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, so, in the last vlog, we got a comment. I can't remember who it was from, so I can't, I can't uh, give you some praise for that. But basically, we got sent a link with some information on it, saying, I'm going to read it as it is. The Foreign Secretary, Teodoro Loxin, said the Philippines government will stop helping foreign governments transport their citizens through quarantine checkpoints to Manila uh, international airports so by Saturday which is tomorrow um, the tw Saturday the tw <coughs> coronavirus <laughs> by Saturday the 28th of March um, the Philippines government will no longer be basically transporting foreigners for free um, to Manila Airport. Now, I know that there's not a lot of places that are doing it for free. From my understanding, humanitarian work is done for free. It's done to help people. Um, and a lot of places are charging um, for the flights. So we know that Cebu are charging for the flights, Palawan are charging for the flights. Some of the flights from Palawan have been free. Um, but that is going to stop as of tomorrow. Um, it could well be the paid uh, sweepers as well, because it's not. It doesn't say about it doesn't whether say exactly. it's paid or unpaid. It just says humanitarian um, help to tourists, basically. So it could well mean that even the normal sweepers they might stop tomorrow. Um, the problem is. Um, the governments aren't really doing a lot from the West to help their people. There are some European com countries that have really kind of gone out their way to bring their people back. I know that Poland have flew in um, repatriation flights for their for their people to bring them home. And I think Germany have done some, Austria, some of the Scandinavian com um, companies, countries. Uh, meanwhile, England are just saying, well, there's still flights from Manila, so get yourself home but obviously that's not the problem it. it's about getting from the islands to manila so um that's something that we've read we're not sure who watches our videos whether that's something that you've been made aware of um but we think that it's important to to just get that out there just in case mm. um the, the problem is we're behind in time now because we're in the uk um philippines is eight hours ahead of us as of sunday it's seven hours ahead so we just hope that you kind of manage to to get yourself sorted in time. If anyone knows whether this is just the free flights or it's the ones that you pay for as well, it'd be useful if you mm. could let us know in the comments and then anyone watching this can scan through the comments and find that out for themselves. Um, it's, it's quite a big deal because that was the only way of getting to Manila um, was these sweeper flights. So... If it's all sweeper flights that's cancelled, that is, that's basically stopping anyone leaving, basically, yeah. unless... Unless the go our governments come in and literally pick them up themselves. So if it's happen. just the free ones, then it just means that people are going to have to pay to get to Manila, which is good. It's not good because obviously getting out of Manila is expensive anyway, but it means there's still an option to get home. But if it's all rescue flights whether they're paid for or not yeah. it's going to make a big difference to people's mm. lives um it's just something that we're going to have to wait because there's not a lot of information and that's kind of the problem at the moment is the information that is about keeps changing so it's hard isn't it to keep up with what's what i mean if we were still if, if we were still in the philippines and this new arrangement was taking place we, we we wouldn't have been able to come to come back to england we would have been stopped straight there well the thing um, is we like we said like we only got back to england because someone gave up their seats on the plane for us um it was a massive thing to do uh we were really really lucky to be able to have that happen for us there's a lot of people who are still stuck there i think the number at the moment is over four and a half thousand people are still dotted about the country um it's it's 
it's a difficult situation because we've come home. Them kids are loud, aren't they? We've come home not because we don't want to be in the country. We've come home because we don't know when this is going to end and we don't know whether we've got the money to keep us going until the end. That is the only reason that we come home. It's got nothing to do with being safer here because we know for a fact that we were safer over yeah, there. Sure. Right? We were safer. Sure. Chris wasn't scared or bothered by the virus whatsoever, but we went and got a couple of little bits from the shops and as soon as we walked in, he's like, go and wash hands. And I thought, this is a new man. Um, we know for a fact that we're in more danger of getting it here and that's not why we came home. We came home purely because we couldn't afford to stay in a hotel because the other options of accommodation were a room where you only seen the four walls and we were in one of them for three days and it drove us absolutely <laughs> mental, didn't it? So it's a big deal for the people who are still there, who are still struggling, who are still stuck and we do these videos in hopes that you know the local people get to the opportunity to read the news in in their own language um something that we don't have the ability to do so sometimes we wonder if there's maybe a little bit more information written in tagalog or you know Visayas or whatever it is um and if there is anything that you know it would be really handy if you could just translate any information that you've been given into the comments so that people who, who watch the video can can look and see what what's being said really or even if you do what what this person done and just send us the link yeah. in the comments and when we because we scan through every comment um it takes us a little bit of time to reply to every comment but um if you just if, if you find some really important information that you think people would benefit like to know from. yeah or, or benefit from just send it in the link we'll see it and then we can make a video on it like what we're doing now so that we can tell everybody that's still still uh over there yeah just whatever we're, island they are we have mentioned in our last video we're we're in a group a group chat with people so you know we did post this to them as well so that they can make their own arrangements and i think a lot of people have accepted that they are going to be stuck on these islands bohol are apparently claiming that they're going to keep people locked into the island until at least the 16th of may that's what someone's been told um because although the philippines have done absolutely amazing at kind of getting control of the virus to to an extent um although they haven't been able to stop it from spreading they've definitely absolutely Slowed reduced the numbers yeah, sure. um of the spread way better than any western country so far they've done really amazing um the only thing is obviously I think it's it's impossible to to completely stop the spread because that will mean that no one can have contact with anyone, do anything, go anywhere, buy food. That it's just I just don't think that that's something that's possible. Which means how long does the quarantine go on for? Because while people are still crossing paths, the virus still can still then cross contaminate. No matter how many times you wash your hands, it's because it can stay on your clothes, it can stay in your hair. Um, it can live on metal bars, um, you know, so it's about the, all these little things that you just don't, you just don't think of or consider, like if you've got an itch and you scratch your head and then you're wearing your mask, but you scratch your head and then you pick up your phone, then when you get back to your house, you take your mask off, you pick your phone up again and it's been in your hair and then you've got it on your hands, now it's on your phone, you've you don't, like it's all these little things, so the, the problem is, obviously, the virus has been contained so well to the point where the numbers are, are still going up but very slowly we don't know as tourists when this is going to end and that's the problem that a lot of foreigners are, are facing over there isn't it is that yeah it's the fact it's it's the financial situation that's what is that's, the deal breaker yeah that's it? what it is i think for everybody is the financial because it, it's expensive when you're just sat there for an amount of times so it could be like a month maybe two months yeah and it's like, like like we were saying where where we was it was gonna it was costing us like 40 pound a day to, for, for the food and for the for the room that's and, like and drinks three thousand pesos a day something like that just to sit and and just to, and we didn't know how long we wanted to just sit for did we so 
I hope this uh, bit of news that we received earlier is of use to anybody, but personally, I don't think it's gonna be any any of, of any use because no one can leave unless you get on these sweepers. So if the sweepers stop, I don't know how anyone's gonna get back to Manila, personally. Mm. The, the prices of the flights has shot up as well mm. from Manila. They've gone from like one, 2,000 to five, 6,000 pounds, dollars. It's just, it's, it's unattainable now. Um, the other thing is as well, the other thing that we wanted to touch on is the amount of cases within Iloilo. So Iloilo, when we arrived, had no recorded cases, did it? Um, now, I have, we've been having a look since we've, since we've been home. And as of right now, the region has three cases in Aklan province. My kid's so loud. Um, there's three cases in Aklan province, one in Capiz, three in Iloilo city. Um, sorry, no, three in Iloilo province, two in Iloilo city four in Bacolod across Negros uh, Occidental. So I think there's a total of 13 in the re the Western Visayas region. Um, and that's the latest data from the Department of Health in Western Visayas. I think I read as well that the 3,000 test kits has arrived in Ilo Wilo City as well, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think the, the, the test kits are there now. So you'll probably be seeing a lot more cases um, cropping up because now they've got more test kits to be able to test people. And the results um, will come back faster because I also read that Iloilo had set up its own testing centre. So um, you're not going to have to send them over to Manila and then wait for the results to come back. It's kind of going to be a lot more instant. It's going to be a lot more quicker, which is going to be better for the area because there's currently... Um, where is it? 95 patients under investigation. Um, currently admitted in hospitals while 11,124 out of 41,915 people under monitoring had already completed the 14 day quarantine. So all them people who were under investigation or monitoring, if it was anything like our quarantine that we were told to, to do, then you're allowed out for emergencies like food that kind of stuff and if you're just being investigated and you're not actually you know diagnosed you're in contact with people even if it's only for a short little moment while you go and get food so it'll reduce that a lot mm. sooner won't it instant test instant results instant action so hopefully that'll help and the other thing was Ilo Ilo City and the fire department were disinfecting the streets. Oh yeah, yeah the videos. We've yeah, seen yeah, pictures yeah. in the news. Um, we had a little read about that, didn't yeah. we? So they had like a big fire truck, right? And it was driving down the streets, spraying all the disinfectant everywhere. Yeah. So uh, I think I actually on. seen that on on the mayor's Facebook page. Follow the mayor now. Me and Jerry are best mates, you mm. know. Um, but he was like, oh, you know, we're looking after the city of love by keeping it clean for all of you Elo Elo Alongo people. And um, he was really proud to, to share that the fire department had um, got involved to go and disinfect the streets. So, so far, that's what we know. Um, numbers still below 20, which is nice to hear. And if the streets are being cleaned, then hopefully that'll eradicate some of the problems. So let's hope so. I know the, in the last vlog we said we was going to do the Q and A next, but we thought because of the whole sweeper plane fiasco might might be ending, we thought we would just put this one up first, just in case. So it, it helps tells someone. people in advance. But take from that what what you will, and um, yeah, we'll have to see you in the next vlog, guys. So, but but. This just gives you the opportunity to just put your question down below if you didn't get a chance to the other day. So if there's anything you would like to know about our wonderful selves. We've written some down already. Then, yeah, we have got some. I put it on Instagram, ask us anything, got some questions. Um, and some of the comments under some of the videos. But if there's anything that you want to know about us, then leave it down below. And we won't answer you in the comments, but we will answer you on our question and answers video. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you again in the next vlog. Peace out.